Jesus did big things. He gathered people together and taught them and fed them and met their needs in big ways. We want to do what Jesus did, so we also do big things like weekend services, kids club, community groups, and go trips. Jesus wanted people to know him and do the things he did, but he knew you could only learn so much standing in a crowd. So he also spent time with smaller groups of people, training them to be like him. He invested his life in making people who looked like him and could actually do what he did. Disciples who were mature, skilled in reaching seekers, growing up other believers, and literally changing the world. He called this method discipleship, and here's how it works. Imagine if you were offered a penny an hour for 30 days, or the option to double just one penny every day. Taking a penny every hour equals a lot of pennies pretty fast. But doubling a penny daily starts out really slowly. In five days, you've only got 16 cents. By day 10, you're still at just over five bucks. But around day 15, those numbers start going bonkers. And at the end of 30 days of doubling, you end up with nearly five and a half million dollars versus a measly seven dollars and 20 cents. Now, apply that to investing in people. What if you took an entire year to focus on just one group of six friends? What if at the end of that year, they could walk with God like you do and could even help others like you help them? We call these groups of friends huddles. Then in year two, you find a new group to help and they all do too. Now there are six people, not just one, who are changing lives like Jesus. If those six people each take on a group of six, then in one year, 36 people are ready to take on their own groups of six. Project forward 10 years and, well, the math just gets crazy. That's more disciples than would fit into the largest stadium in the world. That's the power of multiplication. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. He gave us a mission. Invest in people who will go outside themselves to reach lost people and train them to be like him. When we learn to make disciples like Jesus, this city will flip and the world will change. Hello, welcome to Bridges Church. My name is Annalisa Hunter and I serve as the pastor here for this community in downtown La Crosse, Wisconsin. I'm grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with us today as we connect with God and our community as we build bridges to connect us to the sacred and divine in our lives. We invite you to ask questions, to engage in our chat room online, or to join in our discussion groups um, on site for those of you who are in person at Bridges Church today. Thank you for your presence. And if you are here um, on Sunday or whether you're here during the week, whatever time works best for you, we appreciate that you have chosen to spend this time with us. Today I am not in La Crosse. I am at the United Methodist Church of the Resurrection, which is the largest United Methodist Church in the United States, and it's on the south side of Kansas City, Kansas. And I'm outside and it's about ready to start raining here, trying to get this uh, videotaped and put together for you today. I have been here this week for some of my seminary classes and part of the annual leadership institute that this church does to help leaders, both clergy and lay leaders, from around the country uh, grow in our leadership skills, but also to have time to restore our souls and worship together and to hope and dream big for what God has planned for God's people in the world today. It's been a real Really amazing week and I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a little bit but today as we are gathering now to worship I'd like to open with a prayer poem that I found from John Vandelar you call me to wait on you Lord but I get tired of waiting your answers to my prayers your call for me to serve you the promise of your coming kingdom they all seem to take so long you tell me to watch for your coming, Lord, but I'm not sure how to prepare for a thief in the night, an undisclosed time, and your disconcerting habit of secrecy and mystery. Yet something inside whispers that you're not all that hard to find, that you're always coming to me, and that both the waiting and the watching are more about being open to you now than about trying to not be surprised in the future. And so I will keep waiting. 
and I'll try to stay alert so that I can catch the glimpses of your glory that fill my day every day. Amen. I invite you to respond with me in our call to worship in the sections in bold. Are you awake? Are you alert? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Are you watching the signs? Are you interpreting what is happening today? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Do you see opportunities for ministry? Do you see the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the needy? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Come, let us worship and let us work in the reign of God. Christ has extended the invitation. Let us work together in the reign of God on earth. Amen. Hi kids, great to see you today. So I'm in a prayer walk and this is a place that you can walk through and there are different places that you can stop and pray and connect with God. This is built in the middle of a parking lot at this big huge church I'm visiting today. And so what you see here is a section where we can stop and pray and think about God. And then over here they have a beautiful picture. I'm gonna spin this around where you can see the Sea of Galilee and a ship, like the ones that Jesus and his disciples would take sometimes when they were uh, moving around during their ministry. Uh, Jesus often taught some lessons to his followers while he was on this boat. So this church I'm at has this big, huge conference every single year, and literally thousands of pastors and church leaders come here People like your parents 
just regular, normal, everyday folks come here to learn about God and the ways that God is working in the world right now. And when I got here this year, I was given this book. I got a present. Now, as you can see, the cover is very plain. It doesn't look like much. And when you open it up, it's empty. There is nothing in this book. Now, I know some of you are very good at drawing and coloring. I know some of you are getting really good at writing. And so I'm guessing some of you are thinking that looks like a really cool present because you can write and you can draw in here and you can be creative and you can make up all kinds of things in your imagination. So I'm thinking you're thinking this is pretty cool. Now, I'm thinking it's pretty cool too and I'm going to use it to write down the thoughts that I have when I do my devotions every day, when I read my Bible and I pray with God, the thoughts that God gives me, I'm going to write them down in here as a special journal. But as I was flipping through the pages of this, I found something in this book. Now on this side, this is the conference I've been at, but this side, someone prayed for me. Someone knew I was coming and someone took time to write down a prayer for God that I would have an amazing time with God here today. What it says is, Dear 2021 Leadership Guest, Anna Lisa, my prayer is you learn and connect so God warms your heart, opens your mind, renews your spirit, guides your hands to serve. Blessings from Veda McEater. Now, every year that I come here, I get a card. Sometimes they're mailed to my house. Sometimes I get them when I get here. But it is really special to me knowing that someone has been praying for me. And right now, kids, I want you to know that you are just as special as I am. Because every single week at Bridges Church, there are people praying for you. There are people that pray that you grow strong that your hearts love God and that you will be kind and helpful to everyone around you. I pray for you every week and there are other grown-ups at Bridges praying for you every week. So I hope you have a super week as you think about everyone who is praying for you and loving you and making sure that God watches over you. Let's pray together now. Holy God, we love every person in our congregation and we especially love the children that come to our church. Every one of them have so much energy and so much love. God, we are so excited to see as they come to know you and to love you, God. Please bless each of them. Make their bodies grow strong. Make their hearts grow uh, full of love. Make their minds be filled with all sorts of wonderful information. Lord, we love these kids. Thank you for bringing them to us and be with them every day as they grow. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great week, kids.
So I just finished leadership conference with about 2,500 pastors and lay people from around the country. We talked about being tired from the stress of the pandemic. We talked about the uncertainty of the future of our denomination, the United Methodist Church. But what I want to hold on to from this week, God is fun. God is laughter. God is friendship. God is silly. God is invention. God is amazing. Amidst all the chaos in our lives right now, we came together and we laughed we cried, and we ate crazy colored cake pops. Let's take a little time to consider some of what God has done, and let's see what this tells us about God. Let's read a little from Psalm 19. God's glory is on tour in the skies. God craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madame Day holds classes every morning. Professor Knight lectures every evening. Their words aren't heard, their voices aren't recorded, but their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. Let's think about this as we look at some of God's creation in the skies and the heavens. In Genesis chapter one, we read, God spoke, swarm ocean with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over earth. God created the huge whales and all the swarm of life in the waters and every kind and species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill the ocean. Birds reproduce on earth. It was evening. It was morning, day five. God spoke, earth generate life, every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. Here are some photos of some of the amazing Personally, I think some of them are a little crazy animals and stuff that God has created. After looking at just this little portion of the variety of God's creation, let's now turn to Matthew chapter 6. If you decide for God, living a life of God of worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the cl clothes in your closet are in fashion. This is, there is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds. So right now, what is it that you are feeling? I hear a lot from people that they're feeling broken down, worn out, scared, anxious, and for some of us at Bridges, we've been working for a long time to build a new faith community. And the uncertainty of building a new church on top of the uncertainty of the world right now, it has been a lot for a lot of us. But I was reminded this week that God takes care of God's church. We are to live with justice and mercy and to walk humbly with God every day. God will take care of the rest we can let go of it all. Through the book of Acts and the days of the early church, through the 2,000 years of world history turmoil, 
God has taken care of God's church. The last week, a bunch of us gathered on Wednesday night to talk about what the church is or could be and what our hope for Bridges Church is. And I was reminded that we are abundantly blessed with God right now. We have lots of resources. We have lots of opportunities given to us by God right now. We have an opportunity to be a church of light and joy and peace right now. We made lots of giant bubbles at Pride Fest just a few weeks ago. We had crazy races with paper across a park for Messy Church in August. We are planning a really fun spooky house for Halloween coming up. And we get great ideas from the people who are coming to our church, like Brunch Church. Now here are some more specific ideas from my conference that I'm going to be thinking about in the coming year for our planning. A couple of my sessions this week shared statistics about different groups in the church right now. And one of the really interesting data points about Gen Z, which is the people under age 25, high school and college age, emerging into adulthood right now. And one of the big things that they are discovering is that this is a group of people that is not interested in age group activities at church. They don't want to come to church to be around a bunch of people their age. They can get that a lot of people places in their life right now. They come to church for a multi-generational opportunity. A lot of them are looking for the wisdom and guidance of older people in their lives. They come to church to be together in Bible study and worship and service projects with people of all ages so that they can learn from people of all ages. So what are we doing to offer these types of activities to a large group of people where we can all be together regardless of our age and background? We also had several sessions on racial reconciliation and racial justice. And I spoke with a black woman over lunch one day, and she was sharing with me how she is tired of going to church and having to bring her own kind of music and to suggest a diverse area of readings and topics and music at her congregation. And she just wanted to be able to show up one day where someone else thought of her and had picked out a song for her that she didn't have to advocate for herself, that her church would know her and love her and make sure that on a regular basis, they were including music for everyone, readings for everyone, opportunities for everyone, without everyone having to step up for themselves. And finally, the last session had Bob Goff speaking, who is hilarious. I have one of his books, you can borrow it. And I will have um, available a video of his session. So in the next couple weeks, call me, get together with me. We'll maybe show it after church on a Sunday. It's about an hour long, maybe 45 minutes. Absolutely hilarious. We were laughing the whole time. I don't think it was really a talk. It was really a stand-up comedy session. And he reminded us that our God is a God of joy and joy and God are not confined to the walls of a church or the rules of a denomination. We can find it when we are the unique person that God has made us to be. And when we bring the unique person that we are, our authentic selves, into every relationship that we have with others, God will be there and God will fill us with joy. He ended with a fantastic story that is really sticking with me. He was telling about when his wife was in labor. And during the process, yeah, she was reminding him that, you know, she wasn't entirely pleased with his role in this pain that she was going through at that moment. And he slipped away for just a few moments. And he quick jawed down a letter to his daughter who was about to be born. And in the letter, he forgave her for crashing his car. After they got home from the hospital, he took this letter, put it in a pickle jar, and buried it in his yard. Well, it took about 18 years, but he got a phone call one day. His daughter had wrecked the family car, and she was coming home, and when he got home, she got home, he handed her a shovel and a map and said, go dig. She went out into the yard, and she found this pickle jar, 
she brought inside, opened it up and read this letter. And she and her dad laughed together and cried together. And this story reminds us that just as a heavenly father, as an earthly father can think ahead to forgive his child of anything that might happen before they're even born, how much more does God forgive us? Every one of us has been forgiven, no matter what we were going to do before we were even born. So all those worries we may have been carrying in Matthew 6, we just let go of them because God has forgiven everything, even before we know we've done it. So can we step back? Can we laugh right now? Can we dream big with this God who just has an imagination we can't even imagine ourselves? Can we join with God to become creative when we see the joy in the stars and the fish and the clouds and the animals? In our photos, we saw a God who's always trying new things, experimenting, playing, having fun. Can we build this into our church as well? People are yearning for peace right now, but doesn't peace come from joy? From being secure and trusting that God's got it covered? I invite everyone to come sometime during this weekend to be part of the planning of our church. This next weekend, our church coach is going to be with us and we're going to be training and dreaming of what God means for us to be. Friday night from 6.30 to 8.30, we're gonna have a taco talk where we just dream. We get out paper and we jot down ideas or we draw pictures and come up with all the fun ways that we can connect with God and our community. Saturday, we'll get started around nine and we'll go to 4.30 and there'll be a little bit more equipping of skills. How do we meet people? How do we network? How do we really grow our church? Some of those nuts and bolts that we need to make sure that we are successful in our fun as we go through this process. We will be walking over to Four Sisters for lunch on Saturday. So let me know if you're planning on coming so I can RSVP at Four Sisters and have a table ready for us. Now. This church has a gift store in their lobby. It's mostly used for people to buy the books for their small group studies, but they also have some fun little items and some fair trade items. And I came across a mug that I just couldn't pass up. And I thought this really reminds us of everything. This reminds us to trust God because God's not done yet. He's not done with me. He's not done with you. He's not done with the earth. There is so much possibility still to come, so much joy, so much freedom, so much energy and excitement and creativity. God's not finished. We do not need to despair. We don't need to worry. God is still at work and he wants us to work with him. Our discussion questions for today. What's the funniest thing that you have seen God do or seen God in? And what fun and joy do you want to see at this church? So why don't you take five minutes? I will be in the chat room on YouTube and during the 9.30 worship time on Sunday morning. And uh, if you have any really fantastic thoughts and you really want to make sure that I have them or that the group has them this weekend, next weekend when we're doing our planning, email them to me at pastor at bridgesdowntown.com.
place in all creation Celestial heights and waters deep Praise Him all generations Eden sons and daughters sing Alleluia Alleluia Cornerstone of creation Christ our rock we All in heaven, sing all saints and angels, messengers in chorus, all you heavenly forces. Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ the head of Him all you faithful, praise Him all uncertain. Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ our Lord and Savior, praise His name. God from whom all blessings flow Praise Him all creatures here below Praise Him above ye heavenly host Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice as well as our financial donations to keep God's ministry going here in La Crosse. Please text the word worship to the church text number and click on the link that comes back to your phone to register your attendance with us today. If you watch this Sunday morning or any time during the week, it doesn't matter what time you're doing it, do the same text number to the church and we'll get you registered for that week no matter what time you are watching the worship service. If you're new, text the word CONNECT to the same text number, click on the link that comes to your phone, and you can share your contact information and then request a meeting with the pastor or sign up for our newsletters or there's a couple other options that you can select from there as well. 
You can use the same text number to give by texting the word give. You can also make an in-person donation by placing your donation in the basket if you are actually at um, Bridges Church for the live service. Now, one of the things I learned this week here at Church of the Resurrection, which has you know a couple thousand people coming to it, actually a couple tens of thousands of people that attend, they actually track attendance and they give out grades because part of their expectation of discipleship here is that you show up every week in worship, both to be with God, but to also to be with the community of believers so we can encourage and support each other. They actually kind of give out grades. You get an A if you only miss five times a year. So, you know, who knows? We might start tracking if you have registered and signed in for worship, and who knows, there might be some fun incentives and gifts for those who show up on a regular basis and are worshiping with us and registering their attendance. So thank you so much for supporting our ministry here through both your presence and your financial gifts. At this time, as we think about the joy that God offers us and the invitation to a life of imagination and creativity and creation, let us have a little bit of a covenant renewal where we give ourselves back over to God and commit ourselves to working with God in the world today. Every day we journey on this earth in, is a day in which we make choices left or right, up or down, in or out, yes or no. Some choices are simple and some are very complex, but one choice informs all the others. Who will be our God? Who will we trust to see us through this journey? Who has been with us from before the beginning, bringing us into existence? Who has loved us and blessed us and sent us on our way? who has pointed us toward the path and posted the signs we need to find our way, who has been at our side when the road has been smooth and gently curving, who has kept us through hairpin turns and construction zones and potholes and detours, who will celebrate with us when we complete this course and seek the comfort of eternity, only one, the one and only only one, the one and only. Will you choose this day to stay faithful to the one who is faithful to us? Count us in. Will you choose this day to place your whole trust in the one who is trustworthy? Count us in. Will you choose this day to commit your talents and your resources to the one who first endowed them? Count us in. Will you choose this day to love the one who loved us first? Count us in. Let's pray together. We devote ourselves to you by renewing the covenant, the promise you made to humanity so long ago. Because you are our God, we will be your people. Enlarge our faithfulness, our trust, our commitment, and our love. 
so that we may graciously uphold our side of the deal. Help us always to recognize your presence and your blessings throughout our journey. Keep us in your care. Amen. And now we are blessed to be able to join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion given to us by Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with you and also with you. May your hearts be lightened and filled with God's love. We lift up our hearts and praise to God above. Let us give thanks to the Lord God, our Father. We thank God and praise him. It isn't a bother. It is right and goodful, holy and wonderful, blessed and joyful to give thanks to you, God, almighty and faithful, for it's you that has given us this worship time, filled with laughter, some holy humor and rhyme. It's you that has shown us your holy love that you have sent from heaven high up above. And so with your angels who first sang your song, we proclaim your goodness by singing along. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven is filled with your marvelous glory. Earth is filled with your light. Blessed is he who comes in your name. Hosanna on high, we proudly proclaim. Holy God, it's your son we remember today. Jesus Christ, the anointed whom we try to obey. He taught the poor and freed the oppressed and taught us that you care about the distressed. Through his suffering, death, and resurrection, he taught us your grace beats out your, our imperfection. He ascended to heaven and sits there beside you, but still remains with us in all that we do. On the night he was taken, he lifted some bread. He blessed it, he broke it. And here's what he said. Dear friends, this is my body that to you that I give. Take it, share it, in you will I live. From now on, whenever, wherever you meet, remember our time with this bread here you eat. When supper was over, he then took the cup. With praise and thanksgiving, he lifted it up. For the new covenant, this is my blood, a sign of the Lord's continuing love. For God has forgiven your every mistake, so trust in God's love when you drink, when this drink you partake. May we offer ourselves for God's greater glory and proclaim what we know of this fabulous story. Christ Jesus, he died, but then rose again. He'll return here on earth. Alleluia. Amen. Holy Spirit, come down on us gathered here. With this bread and this fruit of the wine, please appear. Make holy this food, fill us with your grace. So we proclaim gospel to the whole human race. We love you, Lord Jesus, we'll shout it out again. Your glory and honor, amen and amen. Jesus has prepared this table for all who seek his grace, love, and forgiveness. Take and eat, this is for you. Sparing, sent him to die. I 
And now let us go forth with the joy and hope of God this week. Receive this blessing as we return to our daily routines. May the God of surprises bring smiles of joy to the everyday and the ordinary. May the God of love be seen in all we do and say. Go forth rejoicing for the good work has just begun. Amen. See you next time.